Hey family, on November 20th through December 1st, 2022, we will have the all-inclusive Kenya trip. Now, a lot of times people have said, hey, Phil, when's the next trip we will like to go? I want to see Africa for myself, but this is the time to go. Everything will be taken care of. All the excursions are paid. You can do monthly payments. You know, they'll have a safari and a six city tour. You will see Charlie Island, which is something that we did not see last time on the tour. This tour will be 12 days instead of seven days. So make sure to secure your place on the trip by going to www.wbsvs.com, make your deposit, and then you can start making your payments and we'll see you in Kenya. Now, as we're walking by in the area that, you know, we located here in Melrose Arch, we passed by and saw an art gallery. And I saw some of the paintings. I said, oh, wow, let's go in there. Let's go see that because I'm a big fan of art. I love art, especially African art. So we went in and we met a sister by the name of Ruzi. And we're going to definitely have a conversation with her because this art is just so beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here in the Melrose Art Gallery and we with our sister, Ruzi here. And she is the curator and? And gallery manager. Art gallery, <laughs> art gallery manager. So you, it's beautiful art that you can see behind us. Like I said, I walked in here, look, some of the art, you remember good times? Well, I saw some of the photos out here. I said, oh, that looked like good times. So I, I kind of pulled in. Uh, I don't know if you've seen good times. Good times is a show that came on in the 1970s in America. So okay. check it out. So how did you get into this particular work here? Um, well, I started off as an artist. And mm. then I found that they, in terms of curators, there weren't enough uh, black female curators that I myself can look up to. And there weren't enough doors in which artists could walk through. And I thought that instead of um, being an artist, it's important to understand behind the scenes, to understand the ecosystem. So that's why I decided to go behind. And that's what that me, I guess. So, so how long have you been an artist? What age did you start? Oh, I started very young. Um, I think it was uh, like language. It was a different language in which I could express myself through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's been a forever thing for me. And I feel that um, being an artist is um, it's such a it's it's such a personification of life because I believe that we're all artists, but we don't tap into it um, enough. So I think that as Africans, um, it's it's part of our gift. It's part of our language in which we can um, curate discourse beyond speaking, like singing. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So so, ladies and gentlemen, I also met the <laughs> owner prior to coming in here. And the owner, you say, yes, he is a, you know, Mzungu gentleman. And he was very nice. He was very nice. And he said, yeah, y'all can film in here and make sure you capture all the art. So I want to let some of you know that not everybody's against you. You know, people will want to work with you sometime, too. You know, he hired Ruzi here, right? So some of the artwork that we're seeing in here, is it by multiple artists or just, you know, one or how many? Um, so right now it's a solo exhibition by Picture Mofolo mm -hmm. and essentially um, just to touch on the fact that obviously our directors are white mm -hmm. and it's just to showcase at the end of the day um, South Africa is a very, it's a different kind of um, ecosystem because obviously at the end of the day the majority of the people here are black and but at the end of the day the ecosystem in terms of how um, the structure is structured and white people do own the majority of things. But with this gallery, what we're trying to do is, although ownership resides with white people, we're trying to dismantle that by creating platforms in which people can see themselves. And it goes back to what Steve Biko speaks about in terms of black consciousness. Because in terms of going to that level of self-actualization, you need to be aware of, which, of how you can tap into it. And I think that consciousness is a way of which you can envision yourself. And art goes, in, goes to different ways in which one can see themselves beyond what the structures have allowed for one to see themselves. So that's why I believe that galleries are very important. Museums are even more important in terms of looking at how one is archived and looking to the languages in which one can see themselves in the future. 
So, yeah. so, so basically what you're saying is some of the same issues that maybe we deal with in America is kind of here. Basically what you're saying, because in America, you know, black Americans own maybe 0.05% of America. Mm -hmm. And we've been there for about 500 years. Mm -hmm. So you guys came out of apartheid in 1994? Yes. Okay. And you're about 25 years out. Mm -hmm. um, how is that, even in the art world, how is the representation for black people there? Mm -hmm. I think that because there's such a global interest in mm -hmm. black African art, mm -hmm. specifically black African art, um, it showcases that even though when we speak of African art, the, they're always exhibited, but the platforms in which they're exhibited still reside within white ownership. Mm -hmm. So I think that, again, it goes back to why I, it was so important for me to not be an artist, but to dismantle the ecosystem in which art is curated upon, because at the end of the day, um, it's not the tools are so important in terms of the future, you know, because mm -hmm. I believe that um, there's certain tools in which one has to put themselves into dismantling them. And that's why, even when I look at America, you, you, the you guys' community is very much um, aware of, like vocally, you guys are aware of... Yeah, speaking against racism, white supremacy. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you, the way in which you speak of yourself. But yeah, in South Africa, it's, in it's embedded in our ecosystem, you know? So and systemic think, racism. Yes, yeah, systemic, yeah. And I think that it's still, there's still a long way to go, but I think that art has a way in which you can dismantle it. Like the fact that I'm here today mm -hmm. showcases that it's still, there's still more to do. And I right. believe that um, it's, we still have our in, we're still in our infancy stage. So right. It's still there's still a lot of work to do, I guess. Well, let me ask you a question. So, Black Americans that could be watching as artists or just want to invest in the art, want to open up more, you know, Black-owned art galleries, so yes. we can turn this around because the population is mostly Black, right? Yes. So, so what could we do for those that may be watching to say, what could we do with partner with Sister Ruzi here? Mm -hmm. Like, what could we do? It's collaboration. Mm -hmm. I think that the only way in which we can um, build ourselves or rebuild ourselves and, and make sure that we are the authors of our story is through collaboration. And um, collaboration in a way that it's a cross-pollination. So you, um, it's like it becomes a hybrid in which we see ourselves because I believe that we cannot believe that we are silos, you know? It's like, because of COVID, it's very clear that we don't live alone, you know? Right. And we, we resonate with stories that are not even our stories because it's intimate. It's an intimate narrative in which we all have gone through, whether you are across the sea or yeah. And I think that the only way in which these stories can be unpacked is through a showcasing of it next to each other, you know? As it's the same way um, we have night and day. To understand day, we need night. To understand night, you need day. Mm -hmm. And to understand intimately, you need to see it and feel it. And right. that's the only way, through collaboration. And that's what I believe. So, so basically what you're saying is we need to be practicing Pan-Africanism. Yes, exactly. Because, because our story in America, and definitely your, your, the story in South Africa, mm -hmm. is literally linked almost. It's the same thing with the colonialism, apartheid, slavery, Jim Crow. We still have all the issues that's going on in America today. And I, I, I preach that religiously that South Africans understand us more than any other African group. You know, it's nothing against my brothers and sisters on the continent, yes. but, but due to racism, white supremacy, and what you say that even though the white people are 10% of the population, mm -hmm. and, yeah. About 10%, and yet they own in a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely with the opportunities here. I see it's more opportunities here in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, than even maybe back home in yes. America. Yes. So definitely, definitely keep keep fighting because and we need brothers and sisters in the art world to come here to start opening galleries because that's the best way to do it you got to open up galleries if you don't open up a gallery then what's going to happen and maybe in america you couldn't open up a gallery but here you can open up one and um people maybe can ask you questions possibly uh, to how to do that because um if you have a way for people to you know, ask you could you leave me information on the video they could probably tell you like how they can contact you yeah, you can always contact me via my email address. It's Ruzi, R-U-Z-Y, at the Maris Gallery com, And um, it's about educating ourselves of who we are as people, but more importantly, the stories that have been misplaced or forgotten about in different ways, you know? And I believe that it starts by just like waking up and saying, you know what, today I decide that I'm going to be more conscious about who I am and my place in society and my story, you know?
you know, because there's not one single story. There's multiple stories that need to be told. And galleries are the way in which they can speak of it, you know, especially curators. It's our job to ensure that when people walk into their space, they are not only educated about who they see, but they actually experience what the artist is trying to say in terms of their work. So, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you contact her. This is this is one of our revolutionary <laughs> artists right here. She say Pan Africanism is the way to go. We got to work with each other, and uh, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe.